It's finally done three years of tweaking and play testing to create one character customization system to rule them all. This point by feet system can be used at character creation to easily customize any character to be exactly how you want. You can use these balanced out mini feats to create your own custom bestial race that has dark vision, a prehensile tail, and is really good at stealth. Or you can create a human but customize exactly what they're good at. Pick and choose combat abilities, role play abilities, skills, or even sprinkle in some magic into any race you want. If you have ever tried to create a level one character that's fallen short of the vision you had for it because all you had to mess around with were the base races and a base class, or maybe that class would never never allow you to have that specific type of magic you're looking for, a climbing speed, or other combat type abilities. You don't want to have to do a full multi-class and dip into another class and then miss out on other stuff. Which is why you can also use this entire system for feats. And whenever you level up and you could choose a feat, instead you can choose from these feats to customize your own. Or if you're a crazy, super nice DM, you can award these points to players every single time they level up for bonus level ups that they can put into their character and customize it as they level. What I've done is taken every single feat in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and Blew them up. Something like the mobile feat has three different parts to it, so I took each of those parts, balanced them out, assigned points to them, and now you can build it for yourself. So of course some feats in D&D are stronger than others, so whenever I blew them up, I assigned weighted point values to each one. And that's not all, I also went through other editions of D&D and took those feats, and went through every single race in 5th edition, and took those racial features from everything from powerful build to dark vision. I also took my own homebrew ideas and sprinkled them in there as well. Maybe now you see how it took me three years to do it. And the best part is if you don't agree with me on any of these point values, you can just add one or subtract one for yourself. So let's get into some examples of what you're able to do with this and how it works. And stick around at the end of the video so you can get your hands on a copy of this system for yourself. First example of how I created this system is gonna come straight from the player's handbook of half elves. And if you look at their stats, the first thing they get is an ability score increase, two points in charisma, and two points to put wherever they want. Now with Tasha's color of everything, this adds some extra options. You can take that two points in charisma and put it also wherever you want. For my system, any race that you wanna create, you get two ability points you can put wherever you want or both into the same thing. So I see this as two extra beyond that for a total of four. Let's do another example of a bugbear. That means this bugbear would be worth 11 points if you used my system. You have two points for the additional ability score because ability score increases are pretty huge. That's two points. One point to go from 25 feet of movement up to 30, two for dark vision, three for long limb, one for powerful build, sneaky, and surprise attack each. But, and this is now where we're gonna get into the customization of this thing. If you wanted to build a bugbear, but you didn't specifically care about being sneaky, that's not part of your character's vision, and you don't feel like you would be a sneaky type of character like this, or whatever type of race you wanted this thing to look like. That also means you probably wouldn't care about the surprise attack features, so you could take those out and spend those points somewhere else. Maybe you wanna create an elephant type race and spend those points to create a trunk for yourself. And back to the half elf real quick, if I didn't say this already, this is worth 10 points. Because every character in my system system gets a default two ability score. These have two more beyond that for two points each. That's four points for the additional ability score increases they get. They get one extra from speed because they move from 25 to 30, two points for dark vision, one for fan ancestry, and one point for each of those two skill versatilities. Now, like I said, I did this whole thing for multiple feats across multiple different editions and added my own homebrew twist to it. So let's actually show you the system now. So how I use this for character creation is actually pretty similar to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is why I was so blown away with all those changes. So here's my version of custom lineage. For creature type, you're a humanoid and you can literally look however you want. You can pick a certain race from D&D and be that or think of anything. Size, you would choose small or medium because anything outside of that's a little weird. Speed, your base movement speed, like I said, is 25 feet. And there's also two feet options to go from 30 or 35. But you get 25 feet of movement for free. For ability score increases, I tried to be as clear as I could with this, but you basically get two points that you can both put into one ability score or split them up and put them into two different ones, which is how I feel like it should be in Tasha's Cauldron anyway. But let's get into the actual feet points now. At first level, when you're creating this character, your DM chooses a number of feet points to give you. You. Now, I've already calculated it out across all the races in 5th edition, but the average amount of points, the amount of power that each race has is about 9. So if your DM wants to be nice, they could give you 12 points, or if they want to be stingy, they could only give you 6. But this is another really cool customization dial that you can dial up or down to fit your table. And languages, of course, you can speak common plus one of your choice. But now let's say you've already created your character with this system of mine or not, and you reach that ability score increase and you want to choose a feat instead. Maybe you as a DM are struggling coming up with customizable feats for your players to play their characters the way they want. Or maybe there's a certain feat that you really like, but there's just part of it that you would never use. This feels bad to me, which is why I also created this one system to rule them all. And you can use this for feats as well. Just like the average power level of the races is about nine points, the average power level of the feat is three points. So when any character levels up and then get an ability score increase, they could instead choose to get 
three feet points. They could then go shopping and spend those points on whatever they want. Time out. Some of these feats just would not make sense to be able to pick up in the middle of playing. You create your character and you go all the way to level four and then you want to pick up the long limbed feat. How'd you just get long limbs out of nowhere? So I've categorized these things into lineage feats that you can only choose when creating your character. But creativity is king, as I always said. So if there's some sort of way that you could explain these lineage feats to be able to pick them up later on, you totally could. To use that bugbear example from before, if you want to pick up powerful build, how did your body just get so much more powerful out of nowhere? Maybe right before you leveled up, your character found some sort of stone and got imbued with a lot of power. Or maybe your group just took a very long, extended period of downtime and you dedicated your life to training. So when I go through some of these feats here in a second, think outside the box and try and challenge yourself to think of a way that you could pick this up mid-campaign. Leave me a comment down below because I really do love to see how creative you guys are. And like the video and stuff too, I guess, because that's always good, right? Okay, so here's an example of some of these feats. And if you really, really know the races in D&D 5th edition very well, you might be able to see where some of these come from. The core feats right here, I think were really important to establish for balance purposes of ability scores, skill proficiencies, expertise, being able to cast cantrips or even spells. Here's what I mean. So if you want to learn a cantrip and be able to cast it at will, one point. And if you're already freaking out on me, be able to cast spells, this is crazy. There are certain races in the game that can already do this automatically. And that would just be part of the flavor of whatever race that you're creating. And there's a lot of cantrips that you can flavor and spin to not be magic at all and just be that person's natural abilities. To keep going through all the spells here, you could also learn a first level spell for two points, but you only get to cast it once per long rest. Two points to be able to cast certain rituals, three points to learn a second level spell once per long rest, and five points to cast a third level spell once per long rest. But don't worry, you're not allowed to pick these last two up until you reach certain levels. This is not the final form of the PDF that you're seeing right now. So the second level spells requires a level three and third level spells require level five. But I want you guys to take a step back right now and think about how cool this could be. If you think it's too broken, sure, you can increase the point values, but I don't think it's five points to cast a third level spell one time. I don't think it's that bad. What spell is this you chose? Why does it fit your character so well? And of course, if you have one of those power gamers who's a, a fighter and just wants to have fireball, for the sake of having fireball, you should just talk to that player. Or not use this system at all because your players are abusing it and taking advantage of it. It's too cool for them. Greedy players. But in the right and creative hands, this can be a really, really cool thing. Now for additional options here, this is where your saving throw proficiencies come in, worth two points each. Ability score increases, worth two points each. And I feel like that's pretty balanced. Expertise in a skill that you're already proficient in, two points. But with expertise and saving throws, you can only pick two or else you just collect them all. But maybe if it fits your character to have more than that, then let them do it. Skill proficiencies are worth one point each. Martial weapon proficiencies, you get two for the price of one point each. And a general weapon, any type of simple weapon, tool, or language proficiency, you get three of them for only one point. And you can mix and match these. You could do one simple weapon, one tool, and one language, or three languages, or a combination of all of them. And like I've already talked about with base movement speed, you start off with 25, you can spend one point for 30 or two points for 35. And if somebody really wanted 40 feet of movement, maybe I charge them two points. So these are the lineage feats I'm talking about, about things you can only pick when creating your character because long limb doesn't really make sense. Jumper, I mean, unless you really trained specifically jumping, I'm picturing a, a race of some kind that's very good at jumping, like some sort of frog race or cat race or something. Or maybe the human you create is just really good at jumping and you want to pick this up too. There's some feats that require you to be small and this is where you can see something like Fury the Small. That's an actual feat in Dungeons and Dragons, but it's worth two points. I got some water based Based feats, talking to animal based feats. And here's a whole page of nothing but beastly features. And I know dark vision, everybody's going to want to pick up dark vision. That's why it's worth two points. I feel like it's actually more valuable depending on how you run it as a DM. But you got hooves, you got claws, teeth, horns, barbed hide, daunting roar. You're just so intimidating. You can roar. Prehensile tail, natural armor, like a shelled thick skin. And I even have shelled armor where you have it also an ability that you can retreat into your shell. Whoop. And there's that trunk that we were talking about earlier. But the one thing I also want to say is you can give your character claws. You can give your character horns, like if you're a tiefling or something. But you don't have to pick these feats to have some sort of mechanical value behind it. The best example I can give is every Dragonborn I've ever played has had a tail. But for some reason, you just can't use that tail in combat. Or if you do, you'd have to homebrew it or something. This lets you, if you want to, have some sort of tail sweep attack 
for yourself. Now again, it's not on here, but it's gonna be right here in the final PDF. That by the time this video posts, is already live right now. Moving on now, I'm gonna give you a rundown of the different categories here. You have a strong body, that your body's very resilient and can fight off things. A strong mind, is you're able to fight off mental things or even speak with your mind. And another cool thing that I referenced earlier are negative abilities. It says negative two points because you actually would gain two points to spend elsewhere because you took on this negative effect. But I would personally only allow my players to pick up one of these things, because that could get crazy. Moving away from these linear or racial feats into the actual custom feats or core feats of the game. Combat feats help you fight better. Weapon feats help you fight better, specifically with certain types of weapons. You have damage feats to help you do more damage. I've categorized all of these things in different parts to help it be so intimidating from having so many feats here. If you want to use ranged weapons better, oh, hey, look, there's ranged weapon section. If you want to move around the battlefield more often, there's a mobility feat section. We have all these different movement stuff. Defensive feats to be able to take damage better or stop others from taking damage. If you want to be some sort of tank, there's a whole bunch of defensive feats. These would really help you from getting defeated. Defeats. Defeat. Ugh. And then, of course, there's magic feats that your spellcasters could pick up to be even more magical. Or instead of having a multi-class into something that's a spellcaster, you could just be that normal fighter or barbarian. But if you want a little bit of extra flavor, you could pick up one of these or go back to those core feats, like I said in the beginning, and pick up a cantrip. Because sometimes that's all you need to really feel like what you're trying to go for. Last little part here, utility feats like healer, hunter, diver, to be able to dive down into things like a water stuff, inspiring leader. My version of the lucky feat, which I already did a whole video on, sneaky stealth feats, skillful feats to be able to do stuff and this also gets into uh, things with sharp intellect and being a smarter person if you really want to get that across apart from just having a high intellect you can pick up actual things like lip reader intuitive forgery linguist coder Ooh. time out if you're already one of my patrons you know what this is because you've had this thing for weeks now or however long it's been these are the type of pdfs i give out every single month and that was just the tier one level of these pdfs and i have even more beyond that the tier two gets an entire magic tattoo system that i use myself at my table in including 16 or so different magic tattoos. And at the top tier three PDF, there's three full-blown subclasses that I made from scratch with the theme of Tasha's color of everything, including a tattoo bard and a tattoo artificer. Okay, that's it. This system is really near and dear to my heart and I put a lot into it and it feels really great. And it's so exciting to see me give this option to players and let them be able to and collaborate with them, create their own characters. Truly, truly custom characters that aren't just random homebrew things that aren't balanced at all. And they come to me with these crazy ideas. But don't get me wrong, I've had players come up with really cool things, I've assigned point values to them, and then they use it. But it fits within the system and it all feels balanced and good. Now it's one of the earlier videos on my channel, but my player's favorite homebrew of mine is a bonus level up perk system. Basically every single time you level up, I as a DM give my player a custom feat built just for them. Now that might sound crazy, but you as the DM are in control of how powerful this thing you give them is. And a lot of times it's just small little tweaks on spells that they cast a lot or things that they do a lot. Things that would make sense for them to be better at now because they've been practicing it. So myself personally, I don't use this feat system from bonus level ups. I create them from scratch every single time myself because that's something I truly love to do. But if you struggle with that and that seems like a lot or too much to do, you can use this system for inspiration to kind of look through, scan through and think of what to give them or just award your players points, feat points every single time they level up. And also I just thought of this, you can give them as story rewards as part of cool things instead of giving them gold or items, give them feat points or as a reward for extended downtime, give them some feat points. Then your players will look forward to downtime even more for all those character develop moments and more feat points. But as always, anytime someone spends points, whether it's character creation or feats or anytime, I want them to be able to explain the why of how they're able to do this thing. I have even said no to my players when they say they wanted to pick up a certain feat if it wouldn't make any sense why they're able to do that. But that player agreed and said it makes sense. So then they started to role play them starting to work on this type of thing they wanted to do. And then next time they got it. And trust me, it feels way better when your players earn the cool things they can do. This system can be used for far more things than just character creation and feats. A lot of these abilities you can actually give to your monsters and beef them up too. So how I use this that my game table is in one of two ways. I either give this sheet to my players and let them shop around and then build whatever they want, which is really that the way I think it should be designed because the players can literally shop around and it could be exciting for some players. But if it would be overwhelming for some players to have a list of hundreds of feats, then I know the feats very well myself. I listen to what they want. They describe what they're thinking of, whether it's character creation or certain feat that they're wanting to do. And then I can pick them and give them options from there. Let's say I'm giving them nine points of character creation and they give me some description of what they want. I'll shop around and give them like 12 to 15 different point options that they can then pick and choose from. What a nice DM. Or those crazy min-max players that want to create an absolutely broken character 
give them the sheet. Then once they found a way to break the game, increase the point values on them. But the largest criticism that this system is going to get, I already know down in the comments, is going to be for those type of players. But if you feel that it's just a certain combination of feats that's causing it to be too powerful, then just tell them not to pick that feat until later on, when it would make more sense for them to be able to do something like that. So how do you get your hands on this thing? So I literally just showed you how I created this system. But if you don't want to do all that and you want all that work done for you, here's how you get it. All you got to do is join my Patreon before January 15th and you'll automatically get it as part of your tier one monthly PDFs that I give out every month. But I guarantee you every single month, I try and give you guys as much value as I possibly can. I have a bunch of different reward tiers that offer even more perks on top of all this. And every single month, I release that PDF that has a different theme to it. And next month is wild magic. So the next month, that same $5 wormling tier is going to get a D300 custom made wild magic search table. I just want to say real quick that don't worry, I'm still going to be releasing those free PDFs alongside my normal videos. But after spending three years creating this thing, it only felt right to give it to the people who support me the most because I really do appreciate it and it literally lets me be able to do this thing. But if you're watching this video after January 15th, there's gonna be two options. Down below, there'll be a clearly titled link to this PDF that you can get a direct link to to buy it probably on the DMs Guild or my website if I can ever figure out how to get that thing running. Or another perk that I give my Patreons at that same $5 tier is over 50% off anything on the DMs Guild, which would still be cheaper than just buying it straight up. I absolutely love creating stuff like this and I would love to do this full time. And right now, how the internet works with everything, the best possible way is through Patreon. That's why I've chosen to structure it this way, and I hope all my patrons are excited for the months to come. But don't worry if you haven't noticed yet, I've over doubled the amount of videos that I make each week, and those will always be 100% free. So if you want to jump in on that Patreon PDF action link for it's right here, I got other videos right here, and I hope this system has helped open your mind to show you how you can customize different feats and features and character creation for yourself. So stay creative and think outside that box. Peace.